You know, I've been doing episode after episode, and here's another one, the Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel. Hooray, hooray! We are over here, and I'm doing some filming, and you know what? I got thirsty because I'm talking so much. My, vo my voice is getting strained, so I immediately thought of going to one of my vending machines where I can get a soda. So we were upstairs, and of course, the first vending machine I came to was my very first vending machine. Here he is. <laughs> I think he's a Dixie Narco. No, he's a ventilator. That's right. He's a ventilator. This little soda machine came from a golf course in Seaside Heights. It was the golf course that we played as kids called the Nice Lady Golf Course. Now, that wasn't the real name of the golf course, but there was a really nice lady who ran the golf course, and we called it as kids the Nice Lady Golf Course. We always wanted to go play there. And they had this little soda machine, and we bought sodas from it all the time. Well, the golf course went out of business, um, and it sat there dormant for a number of years, and the, the vending machine was laying on its side in this trashed golf course. And I, we used to ride by it and we, we'd look and we'd see how sad the golf course was. It was, you know, in such a condition at this point. And uh, we drove by one time and we saw somebody there. And we, it was the guy who had bought the property. And, um, you know, I asked him, I says, you know, uh, you know, do you, you know, do you want that vending machine? Can we buy it? He says, you can have it. If you can take it, you can have it. So my father came with the old blue Tempest Pontiac four-door sedan <laughs> and we drove over to the nice lady golf course and me and my father and I was really little at this time we had to try to stand this thing up and it's little but it's still it's a, it's a vending machine they're not light but it's not as heavy by any means as as big vending machines but you know for a little kid it was pretty heavy we got it to stand up and then my father <laughs> He's cursing me out. He didn't want to do this. No way. I'm like, come on, pull the car back, pull the car back. And we got him to back the car up to it. And, you know, now we had to try to get it into the trunk of the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there, this is not a really tall vending machine, so a lot of the weight is on the bottom. So we got it to tilt back a little bit, and then we had to get it from the bottom and sticking our hands in the sand underneath and lift it up and, and got it to go head first into the trunk of the old Pontiac Tempest and, uh, you know, drove with the trunk open and this... <laughs> Vending machine sticking up out of the, the trunk, going down Route 35, <clears throat> going north to our house in Lavalette. <laughs> so we pull into the driveway, and the neighbors are always, you know, sitting on their porch and they're watching what shenanigans are the centers up to now because there was always something going on that was not in the realm of normal people's lives. And, you know, it was kind of like, I guess to them it was a freak show because, you know, we were always doing these wild things. So here we are now we pull up with this old vending machine stuck in the back of the trunk of the car. So my father has to back the car. <laughs> he has to back the car. <coughs> down the driveway between the houses and when we get to the back of the house we were going to put the vending machine on the little patio slab back there and that was going to be my new toy to work with well as things go and we're pulling back there i guess the extra weight of the vending machine we get behind the house just pulling out of the driveway where you really don't drive a car in the backyard. We're pulling a little bit into the yard so that the back of the vending machine is near the patio. And the car starts sinking. And, you know, my mother's getting excited and she's like, we're sinking, we're sinking. And she's screaming to carry it on. Everybody jump out, jump out. So <laughs> we all abandoned the car. And now the car is tilted like this and the the bumper is basically on the sand well what happened to the wheel the wheel is gone the wheel sunk down into this hole that opened up out of the earth because there was a cesspool behind the house and a cesspool is where all the pee and the poop go because they didn't have sewer systems back then. So the pipes from the house would go to this empty 
cavern that's built in the dirt and they covered it, I guess, with wood or whatever. And to walk on it with sand was fine, but now you drove a car on it with a vending machine in the back and it broke through the top of the cesspool and the car is sinking down into the cesspool. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, the neighbors are all watching the screaming and the carrying on. My father's all mad. And <clears throat> now it was easy to get the vending machine out of the car because now the car is down low to the sand. So we were able to get the vending machine out of the trunk and, you know, wiggle it away. And now my father had to go get a tow truck <laughs> to tow the car out of the cesspool. It didn't go into the cesspool, but, you know, a, a hole had broken through where the tire and the weight was and the rest of the car was on, you know, you know, sturdy ground. So they had to pull the car up out of, you know, the impression there. And now there's this hole in the sand where you could go over close and kind of look down in there and you couldn't see much because it's dark, but that's, you know, what's down in a cesspool in case you really want to know what's in there. It's not very fun. So we had this open hole for the cesspool in the back. And then he had to hire somebody to come and fix the cesspool and put a whole new top on it, all that stuff. But I got my vending machine from the nice lady golf course. So it's all worth it. You see, there's a story with every single thing you acquire, what you went through to acquire it. So now I've got this vending machine back there. The cesspool's got a new top on it and there's new sand on it and everything's fixed again. So now I spent my time and lazy summer afternoons sanding it down, sanding the rust off, and I repainted it all the same colors. I had to get paint and paint it nice. This piece was a sign that was missing. It was completely gone when I got it. And we had a screen and window company make a frame that was going to fit in the hole. And this, uh, you know, put, I think that's Plexi. They put Plexi uh, fogged in there for it. And I put a new fluorescent light, a new transformer. And the original one said Pepsi on there. I never had it labeled. But this machine, the refrigeration actually worked to my amazement, because I don't do refrigeration, but the electrical didn't, so I fixed all the electrical, and it vended at 15 cents. Can you imagine? That's how old I am. And this is a one where you open the door, and there's all your sodas. And in that hole would be a bottle. You'd have to grab the bottle by the, the cap, and you'd pull it out, and the lever's on the top. I don't even see the top here. There's like a roller there. Okay, that's locked. But when you put your money into it and it's you know allowed it for a vent, that'll release. So then you can pull your soda out. And when one gets pulled out, it will again lock. And it only works with glass bottles and they have to be the right size. Because if you have plastic bottles, you can pull and the plastic will collapse and you'll get under the roller. But the glass, you cannot pull it out under the roller unless the roller releases. So this was a bottle vendor, and after I got it all fixed, I had it sitting out in the back, and now I had to make my father buy all the sodas so I could put it in my soda machine. And we went to the A&P, and I would get all the fire, Dr. Pepper, and I had Coke, and I had Pepsi, and I had cream soda and orange soda, all in the bottles, they'd all be lined up, and I would sit outside in my patio with my Vendo ventilator soda machine from the nice lady golf course. So this is a story of acquisition. What would you do to get your first soda machine? Well, that's my story, and I hope you enjoyed it. So we'll see you next time on the Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel. Bye, guys. So I got some questions here, Randy. Did it always have the Coca-Cola on the side, <coughs> or did you put that? I in? did not put that there. Apparently, uh, so when she they had a Pepsi put... machine. She was yep, selling Coke. Selling Coke too. And then, did it only hold seven bottles? Uh, there's a row like this, and they'd ro they'd, they would roll in. So it's it was like, the max it's capacity like shelves. on that thing. It might have. I, I oh, so each row, each, each one of these each, each was hooked up row, to a row, and they would roll in when it, when the next one came out. So each row maybe had t 10 bottles, maybe. So 10, maybe 70 yeah. bottles. And when you had it there in your yard, um, did like neighborhood kids come over and buy out of your machine? No, nobody came over to buy any. So you didn't make any money? Didn't off make any money, only off of my dad. <laughs>
<laughs> was that the only time you ran it then at your house there? That was the only time I ran it at the house in uh, this lavalette. And then since then, it's just been just been storage. my my baby, my baby little soda machine. <laughs>